Okay. So you should be able to pick one of the teams. So do you guys want to be fire? Oh, oh fire. Um, and then ocean and sunshine. All right. Wait. So do I have to also do it? You do fire. You two do fire. You two do ocean, and then you two in the back do sunshine. Oh, let's see. Oh, is it randomly assigning you to teams? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, let's oh, slide people over. Yeah, that's me. I think I should be there. Yeah. That one. Oh, let's kick this out so it works. This could take a while. Try again, or did it? It will not leave back in now. Well, do we want to just switch seats based on which team you end up on? Can we just do it with like a shared device? Oh, yeah. instead. Yeah, yeah. we'll make each team. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right, we'll do that. Hopefully we end up with three teams on here. Oh, we really You guys have to do something together, or you just did like one device, right? Um, yeah. Um, computer. It's like you have the right. Are you on the old one or the new? The new pin or the old pin? I think it booted you. Yeah. All right. There we go. Three teams. We're good to go. All right. <laughs> All right. And most of these are like 10 seconds. A few of them are 20 seconds. The balance sheet reports a company's financial position. Oh, and there is wow. All right, everybody. <laughs> this is good. They do get they do get more difficult, I promise. Oh, oh, so if you're last. Oh, you didn't answer. No. Oh, sure. We really just <laughs> Good deal. We're we're yeah. Yes. We're doing that. Okay. Are these? Is this like not enough time? I, I would like just. Like, you either have to go up to like 20 seconds where you're sitting there forever, or well, we'll we'll see how it goes. Most of the answers are a little shorter, but well, if everyone answers, then I can start soon. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, okay. All right, so income statement reports a company's activities over a period of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got two people doing it. Yeah, that's fine. The one reason we answered both questions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 
Oh, oh my God. <laughs> So the difference here is liabilities don't have to be an expense. A liability could just be like you borrowed, you took out a loan, could be any type of liability. Um, losses are, I know you guessed that one, and then notes payable, same thing, you'd be borrowing money. So accruals are where you, um, the other one that could potentially be, um, if, if I had said like payables, but... <clears throat> Tables could also be purchases of inventory, which would also not be um, uh, an expense. Ooh, all right. <laughs> This is really close. Like this is like one question away at any at any point in time here. Which are subtracted from the numerator of the current ratio to get the quick ratio? All right, everybody. Everybody's up on their ratios here. Oh, <laughs> Which is not a stockholder's equity account? Yes, so dividends, they're not their own account. They get subtracted out of retained earnings, right? Or if it's dividends revenue, then it would be a revenue account. So true or false. The balance of net receivables represents the amount expected to be collected. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now. Next one's trickier. The balance of net receivables is the total of accounts receivable net of what? Oh, okay. So returns and allowances would actually reduce your balance. Your they would actually be removed from the company's balance. So um, net is net of uncollectible accounts. What is the what is the difference between allowance for uncollectibles and uncollectible accounts? So allowances um, under like when you're referring to returns and allowances, um, that actually. Uh, refers to what gets written off to your income statement when uh, and or adjusted like straight to the balance. So like if you had somebody who um, paid off their um, stuff, you had stuff that was two over 10 and over 30, where you get a 2% discount if it's paid within 10 days, then that would be like an allowance also. So an allowance for uncollectible accounts is specifically just for um, uncollectible accounts, and then the other types of allowances actually get removed out of the balance too and are no longer expected to be collected. So that's the key part there. Um, you're not expected under returns and allowances. Those are items that you don't expect to collect um, because there's been a change to the balance in the receivables as opposed to uncollectible accounts where you say, all right, they owe us this money and we're just not going to collect it because they're not going to pay for it. Tangibles are usually reported where on the balance sheet?
Yes, long-term assets. Cool, and I specifically didn't put intangible assets because I wanted to make sure everybody knew what it was about. But So what are some of the intangible assets? Patents. Goodwill. Yeah, patents, what'd you say? Goodwill. Goodwill, yep. <coughs> copyrights. What's that? Copyright. Copyrights. Oh, copyrights, yep. Exactly. Uh, franchises uh, would be another one. So contractual assets. Or goodwill is not contractual. It's based on um, the value of your company when you purchase it above and beyond the difference between um, your assets and all that. All of the above. It does. It does have the ending balance of cash summarized at the end. It does have totals of uh, certain transactions affecting cash during the time period. All right. Six month prepaid insurance policy would be classified as what? Yes, current asset. Why is it current? Under a year. All the following should be disclosed for related party transactions, except so the impact of the transactions on current kinetics so, and the reason you don't report that is because you may there will there probably isn't any in a lot a lot of uh i mean there could be if you sold a bunch of stuff or bought a bunch of stuff in a non-arms length transaction but you might just have like a shareholder loan where the shareholder lends funds to the company, in which case there wouldn't really be an income um, uh, impact potentially. So, but what we do uh, disclose are the nature of the relationship. So what is the interaction you had with the related party? What were the amounts that are owed? And um, what was the transaction plan? So um, how are they related to you is what they're uh, under that nature of the relationship. <laughs> Which the following is not a reportable subsequent event. Give you a hint. One of these would be reported. Uh, prospectively, not retrospectively. So change of the estimated useful lives of equipment would be um, a change in estimate. Therefore, you would say, oh, we're, we're reevaluating how long we're going to have these. We're just going to change how we're doing the depreciation moving forward. But it would not necessarily change your opinion of the um, how the financial statements are presented at December 31st. Whereas the issuance of a huge amount of debt um, the purchase of another company, which would be like a major structural event for the company. And then if you had an uncertainty item that was reported at December 31st, but was resolved in January, you'd also uh, include that. All right, what's the difference between an error and fraud? I 
Yes, you fraud is intentional. Either an error or fraud could involve misappropriation of assets <clears throat> and incorrect financial statements. Those could happen by accident or they can happen on purpose. When they happen by accident, it's an error. When they happen on purpose, it's fraud. All right, so what's true about financial statement auditors? So all of those are true. Um, one of the things that uh, they like to trip you up with is, or trip you up, I should say, uh, is by saying that auditors will are reporting that their the financial statements are free from error. They do not say that they are free from error. They say that they present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the company um, and its activities, which means that there are no material errors that they have detected based on their tests on the account balances, controls, and transactions. So that does not preclude there being an error. Um, it does not preclude their, them being 100% accurate, just that they believe that the financial statements um, um, are a fair representation of what the company is saying. So who is responsible for the financial statements being correct? Management or the auditors? Management. management is. And they sign that management letter and they put that out there to that effect that they are taking responsibility. And true or false, there is criminal potential criminal ramifications if uh, managers um, knowingly misrepresent their financial statements. True, true yes. And that's... Uh, um, I mean, that's always true, been true if there's fraud, but it's also um, even more true since Sarbanes-Oxley in the early 2000s. What type of audit report adjustment would be made if a company is insolvent? So what would you say in your audit report? What would be the term for it? Going concern, yes, that's the possibility that the company would go under within the next 12 months. What does insolvent mean again? Insolvent means bankrupt, unable to, not enough assets or cash available to meet their obligations. All right, so which of the following could be used to compare changes and balances between years? So horizontal analysis, and that's because when you have your financial statements, you're going to have one period and the next period, and you're going to compare across between years. Um, also, trend analysis is a type of horizontal analysis um, would work in there. Vertical analysis is where you are taking items from um, between one year or one part of a year and, and something else. So like what is a you know ratio that's calculated for this year, uh, like your current ratio? That would be um, a type of vertical analysis. Or vertical analysis uh, would be like what percentage of sales um, is our general and administrative expense? Um, and then debt ratio would be a single year. You could compare one debt ratio to another debt ratio, um, but that wouldn't compare how things are changing from one year to the next. Where do we report material restructuring costs on the income statements? Mm -hmm. 
So income from continuing operations. Um, income from discontinued operations it'd be pretty unusual for you to put a bunch of money into restructuring a unit that you're not going to have going forward. So restructuring um, by definition is the reorganization of existing units that you're going to be continuing to have. Okay. Um, which approach involves restating financial statements of all periods presented? Retrospective, meaning we go back and restate them all, right? What is prospective? Now in the future. Yes, now through the future. And then notes disclosure would be just like, me. you wouldn't restate anything. You just make a comment about it in the notes. All right, true or false? Gains and losses typically occur as a result of normal operating activity. Oh, cool. So false. That's the that's what makes a gain and loss a gain and loss rather than being um, just income or revenue. Uh, inflows and outflows of resources related to your daily operating activities would typically be um, revenues and expenses. And gains and losses are um, typically non-recurring type um, disposals of assets um, that result in a gain or a loss. All right, true or false, changes and estimates are accounted for using the prospective approach. Yay, I'm glad everyone got that because we already talked about it with, when I mentioned the depreciation example earlier, right? So depreciation is probably one of the most common changes of estimates that you will see in an organization. So if we were going to re if we were going to reestimate the lives of our um, assets, a particular asset, how would we do that with depreciation? So we would like, oh, what would it? How much are we off by, basically, from doing it previously and adjust it, and then future money. Like if you were doing a straight line, it would be that 200 or whatever. So prospective, you wouldn't adjust the prior stuff. You just say how much life is left on this asset. Let's say we thought it had 10 years before. Now we think it only has five years left. What we would do is we'd say, this is how much we have left to depreciate on this item. And we would allocate it over the remaining expected five years instead of the 10 years we expected. But everything that was previous to this time would stay where it was. Material errors in prior periods income are corrected by making adjustment to beginning retained earnings. True or false? True, yes. So whatever your earliest period is that's presented, that one's retained earnings would get restated for whatever happened before. And then any periods that are currently on there, whether it's last year or this year would get corrected. U.S. GAAP requires a separate disclosure of discontinued operations. True or false? True. Yes, that's how we did it. We broke out the discontinued operations. <laughs> okay. Receivables turnover is better if it is what? Oh, 
higher. So turnover is typically better if it's higher, whether it's inventory turnover, that means you're selling your inventory faster. Receivables turnover means you're collecting your inventory faster, which means it's a shorter time frame for collection. Mm -hmm. Now, if it was the number of days sales in receivables lower would be better because that would mean that you're it's a shorter collection period. Interim financial statements reflect the following time periods. Less than one year, yeah. So interim means that it's a partial year. It's being stated in between your two annual financial statements, like quarterly or semi-annually. Single step and multiple step income statements differ on So the only difference is how they are presented. Uh, you will still be consistent. Like you're not going to do single step one period and multi-step the next. They you pick one method and you stick with it. Um, the values for your net income and what you're reporting in your accounting system are still the same. It's just laid out a little bit differently in how you present the amounts. Okay. But your net income is going to be the same, your revenues are going to be the same. Mostly it's just how you how they um, how they present the information. So they categorize it slightly differently. All right, so what amount should be reported as tax expense here? Okay, so this is tiny. It says operating income 700,000, non-operating losses 100,000 in a 25% tax rate. Oh my God! Let me put a permanent marker in here. What is that? Oh, all right. So what we would do here is we would take the seven hundred thousand minus the hundred fifty thousand, multiply it times. Yeah. Or maybe it was a hundred thousand. Yeah. So, which of the following would be income smoothing? I put extra time on that one. Oh. So income smoothing is where you make your income levels less extreme, right? So if you have a low income year and then you add more costs to it, then it makes it more extreme, like it makes it a bigger loss. Um, in a year with high income, estimating future bad debts as higher. So if you have lots of income, offsetting it with higher bad debts would make it less extreme. Okay. Which of the following is classification shifting? So reporting, shifting it from operating to non-operating in order to make your operating income look higher would be classification shifting. Uh, reporting sales to fictitious customers to make your revenues look higher, that's just 
straight up fraud. Um, and then reducing estimates of accrued expenses to inflate reported net income. Um, that also would be a form of fraud because you're basically you're purposefully understating your expenses. And then increasing estimates of accrued expenses to inflate reported net income. Would increasing your expenses inflate your net income? Probably not. It would actually make it lower, right? So, okay. All right, which are the same on both single step and multiple step income statements? All of the above. So your net income, your bottom line is going to be the same. Your revenues are going to be the same. Your taxable income still ends up being the same. It's just how some of the stuff is broken up in the middle that differs. which reflects the primary revenue generating activities on a multi-step income statement. <laughs> Operating income. So gross profit neglects all of your operating expenses, which is why that one's not the answer. So your definition of gross profit is the um, revenue generated from sales of your primary goods and services, less the direct cost associated with uh, creating those um, products and services. Why do we separate taxes on discontinued operations from tax on continued operations? Yeah, taxes on discontinued operations. It's for the same reason that we separate the discontinued yeah. operations altogether is because they're not going to happen in the future. So we want to be able to look at our continued operations as what we would expect to look at going forward and separate out everything related to discontinued operations. So what explains how intra-period taxes are presented? Which concept? Intra-period meaning like between multiple periods in the year. Allocation, we allocate them out. So if we had income, if half of our income was in this period for the year, that in this particular month, we would assign half of the taxes for the year to that part, we would allocate it out. So mostly I just brought this one up, not because I expected anyone to actually uh, remember what intra-period uh, meant off the top of your heads, but as a reminder that you should know what all four of these uh, concepts below mean, periodicity, valuation, going concern, and allocation. Comprehensive income includes changes in equity from what? So non-owner transactions. And uh, so that's the difference between your uh, regular net income which includes all of your owner transactions and capital transactions. Um, and then non-owner transactions that occur to due to activities outside of the organization would be what you'd have in comprehensive income. All right, so which of the following are included in accumulated other comprehensive income?
So which is not related to the company's operations here. Foreign currency translation adjustments, yes. All right, so the FASB prefers cash flows to be stated using what method? The direct method, yes. So that's the FASB's preference. Yeah. Now the next question, so uh, only two of those methods that are listed are actual methods. One of them is just a fake made up method. So here we go. Um, which method for reporting cash flows is most commonly used? Give you a hint, it's not the same method. Yay, indirect method, woohoo. So indirect method is what everybody else prefers, but the FASB prefers the direct method. And a significant reason why is because you can set up a set of Excel spreadsheets to automatically calculate your indirect method statement of cash flows, but you actually have to go digging around manually in your um, uh, uh, accounts to get specific account activity in order to calculate the direct method, which nobody has time for that. Right, true or false? Only difference between direct and indirect methods for cash flows is the financing section presentation. Yay, hooray. Okay, so what section is actually the difference? The section that differs between the two. Yeah, the operating section. The financing and investing sections are exactly the same in direct versus indirect. It's just the operating section is laid out. You guys are doing awesome. So which tells us that interest causes the value of money today to be greater than the same amount in the future. <clears throat> Yay, we had a whole chapter titled after it, so everybody got it. <laughs> What's the historical cost concept? Um, the assets that you like buy or sell are what you paid at that time. Yes, are valued based on what you originally paid for them. And then uh, the monetary unit assumption is that you have a stable monetary uh, unit that you're using to measure uh, from one period to the next that stays relatively uh, stable in value. And then the matching principle, what's that one? This is from way back in the first exam, but it's always good to remember this one. You try to match the revenues that are report or the expenses that are reported to the revenues that related um, to them being incurred. So revenues and expenses are matched together based on how uh, they best tie to one another. Simple interest is computed as the interest rate times what? The initial investment owner or your, your principal balance owner. <coughs> A series of cash flows consisting of equal payments over a number of periods is what? <laughs> And annuity, very good. Uh, mixed cash flows would be if you had a series of cash flows of differing values at different points. And we didn't really, we weren't really doing too much of those. Um, 
but that equal payments is the key that should tell you that there's an annuity involved or a series of equal cash flows. If you wish to know what you'll have in your investment account after six years with no deposits, you would use which? Future value of a single event. So, what clues us in that it's the uh, that it's not an ordinary annuity? No deposits. No deposits. Yes. So, if there's no additional deposits, it can't be an annuity because there has to be a stream of cash flows that goes on. Okay. So, if you wish to know what you'll have in your investment account after six years with monthly deposits, you would use what? Yes, future value of an ordinary annuity. True or false, an annuity due has payments and interest calculated at the end of the period. No. Yes, yeah, so due at the end of the period is uh, ordinary annuity, due at the beginning is annuity due. So I think it's due, you have to pay it now. All right, the value today of receiving an amount in the future is referred to as what? <coughs> Present value of a single amount. Very good. <laughs> All right, which type of annuity has a delay before the series of payments begins? <laughs> deferred annuity. All right. And what was a what was a classic or what was an example of a deferred annuity that we talked about on Monday? Anyone remember? Pass. Huh? Yeah, so what was that? What was like the problem that we were discussing? Like the retirement, their benefits. Yeah, pension obligations. Yep. Okay, all right, there we are. We got our podium going. Woohoo! Yeah, I'll turn up the volume so you can hear the dance music. <laughs> All right, and to reward everyone for your hard fought battle, I have treats and people can pick what they want in the order that um, everybody plays in the thing. So there's a variety of things here. I'm out with something to empower you through your exam studying. I recommend that since we get this weekend this break, you can take your exam before the break and you can enjoy your break and not have to worry about the exam. But everybody has all the time. It's a fun day. Should I extend the exam till Tuesday since we don't have class on Monday anyway? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. All right, we will wrap up on that for our recording here.